The JAS-39 Gripen is a well-known Swedish fighter. It entered service in the 90s in its first version, the Gripen A, and since then it has undergone several updates, the most significant of which gave rise to the Gripen E, the last and most modern of its lineage. Although it is a relatively famous aircraft, many facts about the Gripen E are unknown to the majority of the public, so today we will look at six incredible facts about the Gripen E. 1. Your RCS is extremely small. RCS, an acronym that stands for Radar Cross Section, is basically the measurement of how reflective an object is to radar, and this measurement is usually done in square meters. A document leaked onto the internet a few years ago, dated 2002, showed that the Gripen A, the first version of the Gripen, had a frontal RCS of just 0.1 square meter in a clean configuration, that is, without tanks and external weapons. This is equivalent to the approximate RCS of a cruise missile. As a comparison, the Su-35, one of the threats that the Gripen would have to face in a possible conflict with Russia, has an RCS estimated at 1 square meter in clean configuration, which is 10 times greater than the RCS of the Gripen A. It is important to highlight that this value refers to version A, and the reduction of the Gripen E's radar signature in relation to its predecessors was a contractual obligation. Furthermore, more than 20 years have passed between the date of publication of this document and the present day, during which time radar signature reduction technology has progressed greatly. Therefore, it can be safely said that the Gripen E's RCS is less than 0.1 square meter in clean configuration. With the Gripen configured for combat, carrying external weapons and tanks, this RCS value will increase, but will still be below the vast majority of fourth-generation fighters current. 2. The Gripen E's electronic warfare system is so powerful that it was selected to equip the electronic warfare version of the Eurofighter Typhoon. A few months ago, Germany announced the choice of the same Gripen electronic warfare system to equip the version of the Eurofighter Typhoon that will be specialized in electronic combat. This is the Arexis system, which uses receivers and transmitters with state-of-the-art spherical coverage and gallium nitride semiconductors, which guarantees incredibly high transmission power, several times greater than legacy systems of similar size. This version of the Typhoon should be used to locate and interfere with enemy radars, protecting Allied aircraft in attack and defense suppression missions, similar to the role that the EA-18 Growler fulfills in the American Navy. Basically, the Eurofighter Typhoon specialized in electronic combat will have a standard capability that the Gripen E already has from the factory. This demonstrates the size of the focus in electronics warfare that Saab gave to the Gripen E. 3. War Peace Button Gripen E has a modern state-of-the-art cockpit, which includes, among other things, a wide-area display, where key information is shown to the pilot in a clear and organized way to optimize the decision-making process. However, when looking at the Gripen E cockpit, there is something that often goes unnoticed by most people. This is the War Peace Selector button, located on the right side of the pilot. This button is almost always kept on the piece position, which limits Gripen's capabilities, such as engine power and other systems. Keeping the selector in the piece position reportedly also masks the true frequencies of the Gripen E's radar and datalink systems, decreasing the chance of its real signals being detected and classified by other nations' signals intelligence systems, which could subsequently decrease efficiency of Gripen E in real combat situations. When the selector is switched to war, all capabilities are released to the maximum. This includes the maximum power of electronic jamming systems, maximum radar range, maximum engine power and maximum maneuverability, even allowing maneuvers of up to 12G for short periods of time. This division of capabilities provided by the War Peace button preserves the aircraft from excessive wear and tear in daily use, and also masks its real combat capabilities, especially in combined exercises with other nations, which makes this simple button a very useful and creative solution. 4. The Gripen E radar has innovative technology. 
Modern electronically scanned radars installed on fighter aircraft are mounted on fixed antennas, as the scanning is done electronically, which eliminates the need to move the antenna towards the area of interest. With this fixed antenna, most current fighters can detect targets located within a frontal arc of up to 60 degrees to each side, meaning targets located outside this coverage will not be detected. Gripen E's Raven ES-05 radar has innovative technology. Although it is also an electronically scanned radar, its antenna was mounted on a repositionable structure, which allows the radar to be smoothly moved on its own axis, creating an unprecedented combination of mechanical scanning and electronic scanning. This combination expands the coverage field for up to 100 degrees on each side over the frontal arc compared to 60 degrees of coverage for traditional radars. Among the advantages of this technology are safer long-range engagements, as the Gripen E can launch its missiles and keep the target within sight while moving away. This also reduces the possibility of Gripen E being surprised by a threat that could emerge from outside the coverage angle of a traditional radar. 5. Gripen E will be immune to GPS interference. In the current war in Ukraine, Russian electronic interference capabilities have gained considerable prominence. Several news reports suggest that Russian GPS jammers are decreasing the effectiveness of NATO supplied equipment and weapons that rely on this navigation system. Thinking about overcoming this problem, Saab is developing for the Gripen E one special navigation system that does not rely on GPS signals. This system will consist of two main components. The first will be a database in Gripen itself where high precision three dimensional maps of the regions of interest will be inserted. The second component of the system will be a high-definition camera, positioned at the bottom of the Gripen. In this way, while the Gripen flies in a region without GPS signals, the camera installed in its lower fuselage compares the terrain below in real time with the three-dimensional maps inserted in its memory. This allows for precise localization, and does not emit any navigation signal detectable by signals intelligence systems. With this, Gripen E will know its exact location in real time, even if the GPS navigation system is completely denied by the Russian jammers. 6. Gripen E is capable of supercruise flying. Flying in a supercruise regime means having the ability to fly at supersonic speeds without the use of a post combustor. Because afterburner greatly increases fuel consumption and most fighter jets need afterburner to fly at supersonic speeds, supersonic flight often ends up being limited to certain very specific occasions and for very short periods of time. The new more powerful engine gave the Gripen E the ability to fly above Mach 1.2 without the use of afterburner even in a combat configuration, making it one of the few fighters today capable of flying at supercruise. In a real combat context, this capability guarantees some advantages, such as being able to expand the useful range of missiles and guided bombs due to launching at higher speeds. These facts demonstrate the level of technology and commitment that Saab has put into Gripen E. With the exception of the stealth fuselage, it has all the technologies present in fifth generation fighters, and even some technologies that not even fifth generation fighters have, such as repositionable radar. Thank you for watching the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.